In CS150, we focus quite a bit of our attention on procedural programming. Let's spend a bit of time reviewing this as we've had a bit of a break in between semesters, and the knowledge is still tremendously applicable in CS151. We can start with algorithms. Several authors, such as our former chair Judy Gerstein, describe computer science as the study of algorithms. While some may debate this, they are still a tremendously important aspect of our field. Informally, you can say that an algorithm is a step-by-step -step set of instructions for accomplishing a task, or more formally, an algorithm is a well-ordered collection of unambiguous and effectively computable operations that, when executed, produce a result in a finite amount of time. Now we can turn our attention to the basic procedural program structure, which is basically an outline of how you accomplish an algorithm. On the right, you see an outline of a basic procedural program. We begin with a prologue comment that tells the purpose of the program and who authored it. From there, we indicate our libraries and namespaces through include and using directives. We also declare any functions that we may be using in the area above the main program. Now we get to the main part of the program. In C++, we use int main to start the main body of the program, although some of the more edgy folks like to use void main. Next, we declare our variables, create statements that correspond to our algorithm, and produce results and return. At the very bottom, we have our function definitions. In the outline from the last two slides, we mentioned types of statements. Let's take a look at some general types of statements that we can encounter in C++. In C++, there are several different variable types. You can find a fairly comprehensive list in Chapter 2 of DS Malik's textbook or in the online documentation about the language. Some basic variable types used in C++ were int, double, char, long, and long double. To declare a variable, you indicate its type followed by its name. In general, you want meaningful names for your variables rather than things like x and y. At the top of our program, we have our include directives, which are the libraries we want to use. There are a lot of different libraries out there. The ones we used in C++ were IO, Stream, C Standard, Lib, FStream, CMath, and String. But there are a heck of a lot of others, and we'll get to some of them in CS151. In order to have input and output in C++, we need streams. For the keyboard and monitor I.O., we can use CN to insert something into the stream or get input, and we can use COUT to take something from the stream or to give output. Don't forget the insertion and extraction operators. We can also use files for input and output. Here we need the FStream library and the OFStream and IFStream classes. The files themselves are objects, so we use open and close using methods. We can use the insertion and extraction operators for input and output, but it's also possible to use methods such as get, put, and peek for individual characters. Chapter 3 of our text has some good information on files if you want to review. Assignment statements are fundamental to imperative programming languages. The assignment statement is used to assign a value on the right to the variable on the left. In C++, we use the single equal sign to do this and terminate the statement with the semi. The program can be pretty boring if it always runs in exactly the same way and never makes any decisions. We use branching control structures to make decisions. In C++, the branching control structures are if, if else, if, else if, else if, else, and switch. And we can have as many else ifs as we want in the uh, if, else, if, else uh, statement. Iterative control structures allow us to repeat commands or segments of code. This is important since we often have to do things such as adding up a group of numbers or keep executing a game loop until the very end of the program. In C++ control structures are while, do while, and for. For is a counted loop, while and do while are the indeterminate loops. When we design a loop, there are three things to consider. One is the initializing statements, that is what's true before. Second is the body of the loop, what happens inside and how things are changed. And third are the conditions for ending the loop. Sometimes this is formally called a guard. It's possible to nest loops and condition statements to form more powerful segments of code. In fact, you'll need to do this for any non-trivial program. That covers the very basics. So uh, there's quite a bit of information that um, we're covering and it's more than what we can get done in just a few minutes. So we're gonna get some practice with the lab. We'll also cover functions and arrays in our companion lecture.